Oh, hello, I didn't see you arrive. I am back today with another album review. And today I'd like to do a, a black metal album that I recently acquired. Now, as some of you may know, I am a big fan of the black metal genre. And black metal is sort of one of those um, types of music that will be difficult to find in you know mainstream music stores and that sort of thing. And sometimes despite the unpopularity of black metal, um, certain bands can be even neglected relative to the entire black metal genre itself. And one of these bands um, that I'm quite familiar with is The Hexen. Today I will be reviewing this release here, which is called My Soul For His Glory by The Hexen. Now, I have a few points to uh, mention before I really start talking about the music here. The first point is that the Hexen actually has three albums out right now, and I'm talking full-length albums. Um, this is the third of those three full-length albums. Usually, I prefer to start with a band's older music and work my way forward through time. But in this particular case, the Hexen's music is especially hard to come by, and I have not yet been able to acquire the first two albums from the Hexen. I did receive this here as a gift, um, so I'm happy to own it, and I'd like to review it. Now, the other point I'd like to mention is that Behexen is a band that shares two members with Sargeist, one of my other favorite black metal bands. And um, you may have seen my previous uh, review of Sargeist's uh, demo album, Tyranny Returns. And as, as you may know, I really enjoy that band, and as such, I've always been very interested in listening to Behexen as well. That's not to say that Behexen is any sort of you know copycat or clone of Sargeist's music, because they're quite distinct in their own right, and they're quite enjoyable in their own right as well which I will get into now, talking about the music. <clears throat> so what we have here is uh, an album released in 2008, and it contains eight tracks. None of these tracks are really exceptionally long, um, which is a little bit surprising because this album is, uh, runs under 40 minutes, I believe, in length. All in all, though, it's not such a bad deal. You know, black metal albums sometimes have fewer tracks than other genres, but, you know, the more important factor is whether or not the music's good, enjoyable, and that sort of thing, which is what I'll be talking about. <clears throat> now, the general style of this album uh, is sort of split into two kind of little pieces. Uh, for a lot of the album, what you'll hear is, you know, heavy thrashing, crunchy guitars, um, you know, standard black metal type drumming, you know, the continuous uh, clatter of the drums, um, you know, decent bass back uh, backing. Uh, pretty standard black metal growls, and I mean, I mean, this is not a big surprise. This is a, a, a you know old school classic style black metal album. You know, not dissimilar from what what Sargeist does with their music, even though you know each band has their own distinctive styles and influences to to a lesser degree, maybe. <clears throat> and so, at first listen, at a first listen of this album, what you feel is that you're being hit, uh, being hit with a heavy wall of sound. It just hit you in the face, filling up your eardrums with this heavy, crunchy sound. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's a little overwhelming at first, actually. And this is an album that will take you, you know, a good four or five solid listens to really fully understand, to really appreciate, and to really get into the details and the really enjoyable parts of the album. <clears throat> at first, you may not enjoy this album whatsoever. When I first listened to it, I was, you know, a little disappointed. And that's not really surprising, you know. Um, they do thrash about quite a lot on this album, and that's one of my, my criticisms of this album, is that there's quite a little bit, uh, quite a bit of uncoordinated thrashing sometimes, um, where they try to make the music sound scary and heavy, but sometimes it comes off as um, uncoordinated and not well written. Now, one of the things you have to understand to enjoy this album is that it's not um, a release that's based on, you know, designing and engineering guitar riffs or any of that um, sort of thing. What it is based on is um, engineering a sound, putting variations on that sound, keeping the songs interesting in that kind of way, and having layers upon layers of uh, different aspects and sounds and uh, influences within the tracks. And that's the sort of thing that you really pick up on you know, the third, fourth, fifth lesson of this album. <clears throat> Some examples of these variations are, number one, the lyrics and the vocals. Um, a lot of this, the album takes 
sort of a standard black metal approach to the vocals. You know, you'll get that sort of growly stuff. Um, and at first, it's kind of overwhelming. It sounds like kind of samey the first one or two times you listen to the album. But there are a few subtle points that keep, keep it interesting. Number one, this is um, something I really like about this album. On the title track, you'll hear some very echoey, very um, sort of atmospheric, clean vocals. And that really added a nice um, bonus element to the album. It was sort of like wall of sound, darkness hitting you. And then, you know, the song uplifts itself. It's like a sigh of relief. And you hear this very echoey, melodic, flowing um, lyrical passage. And it's quite a diverse uh, sound from the rest of the album, which I quite liked. Now, in terms of the standard black metal vocals, um, the singer does put some effort into push, uh, putting different parts of emphasis on the different songs and the different sections. You know, in the faster parts, he almost has a little bit of a punk vibe going on. You know, not to the extent of other bands like Stay Horn Almighty or anything like that, but um, you can definitely hear uh, a more aggressive sound in there. And then a more um, meandering and um, atmospheric dark stuff. You know, like the track 666, you can hear those like really um, dark black metal like gurgles and uh, and sort of interesting sounds like that. And although the the main vocals don't stray too far from the black metal um, sound, you can definitely hear a few little tricks here and there to keep the album, you know, different, interesting, and paced a little bit. Now, in terms of guitars, what you really get is like a, a heavy wall of sound and, and a very crunchy thrash noise. When when this pays off is really when you get sort of the atmospheric backdrop to the really thrashing bit. And this really comes together, especially in the final track of the album, which has to be like my favorite um, office release, My Stigma's Bleeding Black. <clears throat> well, what they do here is really provide that back, the background atmosphere and give you like, the heavy thrash vibes. And this is one of the songs where the actual guitar riffs do come together quite nicely. Now, in terms of bass and drums, um, the bass is actually quite uh, important and somewhat audible on this album, especially in the cruncher bits. The bass provides the backdrop for that, that whole vibe to it. And although the drums may sound like standard black metal fare um, for, for quite a bit of this release, there's actually some very good fills that, that you'll get and really listen to and really enjoy on the, you know, the third, fourth, fifth lesson of this release. <clears throat> you know, the drums, uh, for the most part, are standard, standard black metal sounds, um, you know, thrashing about um, some interesting syncopated parts in there between the little guitar riffs and such to uh, really keep the pressure on. But listen for those nice, nice little drum fills, and they will be rewarding to you when you come back and listen to this album. Now, as I said, you know, this is an album I do enjoy. Is this one of my favorite black metal albums of all time? No, definitely not. It isn't. Um, it's not as diverse, perhaps, as some of the releases that you may have listened to. But uh, it is an album that, through its subtleties and through its um, tweaking and rearranging of certain sounds and techniques, um, does keep the uh, listener sort of interested and involved in the music um, more and more the more you listen to this album. So that's really all I have to say about this. Check out the Hexen. They're one of these sort of forgotten bands, even for black metal. And here you have it, My Soul Force Glory. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.